I've been getting a lot of requests to dive into hybrid builds, and it's definitely a topic I'm going to cover. In fact, I've been building you up with the knowledge required to make a hybrid build bit by bit. The topic is very complicated and has multiple facets to consider. I will be covering one of them today, weapon buffs. It just so happens that many of these buffs make up what I call mono-scaling spells, which are spells that only scale to either intelligence as a sorcery, or faith as an incantation. I've compiled a list of these mono-scaling spells. It is good to keep in mind that pure intelligence scaling staffs and pure faith scaling seals are better for these spells if they are a core part of your build. Let's start with sorceries. When you're using the staff and seal calculator from my other videos, this is where the in spell scaling column comes in handy. Most of them should be exactly the same as the spell buff column, but you can see that staffs like the Prince of Death staff have a lower in scaling than the spell buff because it also scales to faith. Scholar's Armament at 0.75 or 75% of intelligence based sorcery scaling to a weapon as magic damage. This spell lasts for 90 seconds and cannot be used on weapons that already have a secondary damage type, like magic or lightning, nor on poison, bleed, or occult infused weapons. Typically, buffs also don't work on unique weapons, but there are outliers like the Bloodhound's Fang. It means that you're usually restricted to heavy, keen, or quality weapons. That's it for the sorceries, what a short list. Basically, if you're not running Scholar's Armament as a Spellblade-ish build, you can forget about mono scaling. We will talk about how effective buffs are in a moment, but for now, let's move on to incantations. There's a whole lot more incantations that are mono scaling. Likewise, you would only be looking at the faith scaling column instead of the spell buff. Quick heal, heal, big heal, and biggest heal all only scale with faith. It should be quite easy to remember that the heal spells are mono scaling. As for best chill vitality, it heals a flat 5 HP per second for 120 seconds, so it doesn't scale to anything at all. Next is the Order's Blade and Electrify Armament, which are basically the faith versions of Scholar's Armament adding 0.75 times faith based incantation scaling to your weapon as holy or lightning damage, depending on the incantation. The same rules apply to them as the scholar's armament, so you can use them on weapons that already have a secondary damage type like magic or lightning, nor on poison, bleed or occult infused weapons and most unique weapons. As a bonus though, Order's Blade also deals 2 times damage to undead, which is an effect currently not listed on the wiki. Fike's Dragon Bolt has a lot of effects, but it's essentially a trash buff you can forget about. Let me explain. This buff is split into two components. The weapon buff is basically electrify armament for 70 seconds. The body buff increases your equip load by 15% and reduces your lightning negation by 35%. The body buff can be overwritten by skills like Flame Grant Me Strength, Dragon Bolt Blessing, and black flame protection that gives you a buff on your body. This incantation will still stack with golden vow. When you make builds, you optimize your endurance just enough to not fat roll. 15% extra equip load won't be much more helpful unless you don't cast any other body buff and don't mind casting this once per 70 seconds, which is a huge hassle. 35% lightning negation reduction isn't a problem if you're not facing any lightning damage. But lightning is almost always your weakest defense already, so you would be in big trouble if you do face something that deals lightning damage. You can refer to my damage calculation video if you want to know more about this. The main point is, with this buff on, you can't use another body buff without overwriting the blessing. And if you override the body buff, this spell is just a weaker electrify armament that costs more. Black Flame Blade adds 0.65 times faith based incantation scaling to a weapon as fire damage. It lasts for 7 seconds starting from application and applies black flame upon hitting. Because of the animation, you really only have a bit over 6 seconds to attack. The black flame deals 0.1% of max HP plus 1 HP 10 times a second for 2 seconds. So in total, it deals around 2% max HP worth of damage in 2 seconds. A problem is, the debuff doesn't stack and you can't refresh it so it is very easy to miss a few milliseconds even if you continuously attack. You're probably getting 6-7% of the boss's max HP most of the time with this skill. It definitely gives you more burst than the regular buffs, 
but I would probably rather just use a regular buff that lasts 90 seconds, since you lose out time to attack when you constantly apply the Black Flame Blade. Finally, Blood Flame Blade adds 0.4 times faith based incantation scaling as fire damage to your weapon, and applies a bleed debuff that deals 40 bleed over 2 seconds to any enemy hit. This bleed effect can stack, and Blood Flame Blade lasts for 60 seconds. However, the bleed does not scale to arcane and will always remain a flat 40. Okay, so now that we have introduced all the buffs, let's talk about how good the general buffs are and how you can weave them into your own builds. Spell buffs are essentially flat damage bonuses because they give you the same amount of secondary damage regardless of how much attack your weapon has. For example, if you have 300 sorcery scaling, Scholar's Armament will add 225 magic damage to your weapon. When it comes to damage, the motion value or damage percent of each attack are generally very similar even across weapons of a different weight class. Weapons differentiate by having a different amount of base attack, with faster weapons having less. Since more number of attacks means more damage dealt from the buff, it means that buffs tend to work better for faster weapons. Let's try comparing using the Scholar's Armament versus directly applying Magic Infusion. We will use the Nagakiba, a weapon I've covered already. It is slightly on the faster side, but definitely not the weapon with the greatest number of attacks per second. Here, we have two Nagakibas, with the same build on Intelligence. Then, we use this mono scaling spell buff table I made, which records the highest possible spell buffs at each Intelligence or Faith level. I included the Lusats because if you're mostly using the staff just to buff your weapon, FP isn't as much of an issue. After accounting for the 75% buff itself, this is the table we end up with. Adding the buff we get onto the Keen Nagakibas, we get a total of 596.5 attack rating. We see that the Scholar's Armament loses to the Magic Infusion, even though the Nagakiba has a non-trivial amount of Strength and Dexterity requirement. Magic Infusion does less well on weapons with higher Strength and Dexterity requirement, because it turns the scaling of Strength and Dexterity very low. The Nagakiba requires 18 Strength and 22 Dexterity. However, the Magic Infusion doesn't always beat the Scholar's Armament. Refer back to my soft cap video and we see that there is a major soft cap for 50 Intelligence. If this build is an 80 Intelligence build, the Nagakiba will actually have more attack with the Scholar's Armament. Because while the Magic Infusion hits a major soft cap, you can swap to backloaded staffs. Conversely, it also means that Magic Infusion requires fewer stat points to get a large chunk of damage. Here is where I want to bring in the concepts of opportunity cost. The definition of opportunity cost is the loss of other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. But what is this fancy language and how does it matter in Elden Ring? A common thought for people who don't realize this concept or realize this concept but don't fully consider it is thinking, my build is strong. What do I mean by this? Well, a build can be strong. But that doesn't mean there isn't a stronger build you can create with the same cost. What you should be asking yourself is, is my build the strongest build I can make it? Going back to the Nagakibas, if the main purpose of Scholar's Armament is for swinging your katana around, an example of an opportunity cost that would be a better option is the Code Infusion. For a little less attack, you would be getting Frostbite buildup. But what if you wanted to use Faith instead of Intelligence? There isn't a code equivalent when it comes to faith infusions, and seals give less scaling. Thankfully, Blood Flame Blade is an option. With the finger seal at low requirements, you are able to essentially get 53 fire damage plus 40 bleed buildup per swing. Some of you are absolutely right in my claws video. Blood Flame Blade works well with heavy or keen claws, especially because it is already very strong with low levels of investment, since the spell doesn't scale with arcane. Even with 12 faith and 10 arcane, you're already getting a lot out of it by gaining 40 bleed buildup per hit, even though it's applied over 2 seconds. A word of caution, I'm not saying this is always the strongest buff, because at higher faith levels, you would be getting more secondary damage from other faith buffs. Let's take a look at another example of opportunity cost. Status motion values for most attacks are pretty consistent, so a heavy or keen claw with blood flame blade would essentially be doing 100 bleed buildup per hit. A suggestion I gave was the blood infused venomous fang. With the current stat distribution, you actually get more bleed than using a blood flame blade at the cost of less attack. But the blood infused venomous fang also applies the deadly poison status effect, 
which deals double the damage of regular poison for 30 seconds, allowing you to more effectively deal with bosses while being weaker against smaller mobs. You also don't need to buff up once per 60 seconds. There can be more than one good option, and you're trying to find the best option that suits you. So should you use buffs? As much as I want to give a straight answer, the real one is, it depends. At lower levels of investment, something like under 60 intelligence or faith with low strength and dexterity, infusion tends to win out. With more investment, buffs become stronger and stronger. I too want to give a simple and straightforward answer on how to build a hybrid build, but there are plenty of nuances and optimizing a hybrid build is very case by case. There is no short and easy answer, but I will be explaining it step by step as simple as possible. Let me tell you a secret for my video release order. I try to ease some difficult subjects by breaking them into parts and introducing them bit by bit, slowly introducing you to a wider range of ideas to consider. For those of you who diligently watches through all the videos, the harder concepts will be easier to grasp. I also highly recommend taking a look at the weapon breakdowns even if you don't play them. Sometimes you might discover something interesting you might want to try. And for PvP, it is imperative to know your opponents. Let me reiterate an idea I presented in my soft caps guide. Knowledge is a weapon no one else can take away from you. I'm only here to guide you, but it is you who chooses to learn. What I can promise you is if you do choose this path yourself, by the end of this journey, you will be able to create builds you've never thought of, and optimize builds stronger than ever before. Like and subscribe. Krite, signing out.